Hello everyone, and welcome to this Lightarama tutorial. In this video, we'll talk about tips and tricks for traditional props and sequencing in S6, and highlight features that weren't available in S4 and below. We'll start with the preview editor. One of the biggest improvements over S4 is that the visualizer and sequencer were combined into one program, the sequencer with a built-in preview editor. Now when you need to create your display for the first time, add a new controller or channel, or make changes to your channel layout, that's all done in one place. The preview for your house is associated with every sequence you use, so when you make a change or add a channel in your preview, all 20 of your sequences get the memo. No more individually opening every one of your S4 sequences to make a channel update. The next preview benefit is more realistic representation of traditional props, thanks to import options from multiple vendors and a little Lightarama magic through the custom prop shape. Let's pretend you want to add a custom-built LED Merry Christmas sign as one channel, and your spouse really doesn't want you to represent that with a singular bulb and be told to use their imagination. Instead of painfully hand-drawing shapes and letters, start by searching the vendor databases for a matching prop. After the prop imports, switch the prop type to traditional lights, either a multicolored strand or separating colors into multiple channels depending on what you'll use. Then pick the color of your lights and switch the network to LOR. Next, click on the Custom Light Placement, then select the Blue Grid Edit menu. Here, you'll see the option to convert this shape to a traditional string of lights. Once you save the settings, you can now move your new high-quality prop shape to its place in your display. The third preview benefit is Prop Groups. Represented by blue text in the list, you can select sets of props to put them in a group for easier sequencing later on, and even put the same props in multiple groups, like having a group of the four colored bushes and also including them in a group of all of the bushes in your yard. The next update is the Channel Conflicts and Bulk Changes tab. Right now, this check mark is green to show that the display is good to go with no conflicts. For example, the first upper window is on Unit 1, Channel 5, and the second window is on Channel 6. Let's accidentally set this one to channel 5 as well. Now, we'll see a yellow warning symbol letting us know that there's a problem with the layout, a feature not available in S4 and below. Here you can click on a prop to see exactly what's wrong, and then fix the problem right in this tab. If you switch the dropdown to All Props instead of just Conflicts, you can also use this tab to make bulk changes to props, like changing networks and unit IDs, adding leading zeros, and even using Find and Replace to change the text and prop names. There's plenty of other preview benefits we won't cover in this video, so be sure to look around, particularly at the String Summary tab so you can copy and print an installation guide, the Statistics tab to see an overview of your display, and back in the Design tab, there's a Format menu and Brightness slider to explore. Just make sure you've added a background image first, or that slider will be grayed out. Now we'll save and head to the sequencer, remembering that multiple sequences will be associated with the same preview, unlike S4 where the channel changes were made and updated per sequence. Whenever you add a new channel in the preview, it will show up at the bottom of this list for every associated sequence. Remember those preview groups? They're important for a few reasons. The first is for creating grid views, which replace the concept of tracks from S4. If you import any S4 sequences, all of your tracks will import as grid views. Use this menu to add a new view, then select any groups or props you want to see when you switch to that view for sequencing. I'll select all of my preview groups, as well as the single props for the Megatree and Merry Christmas sign. You can switch to other views at any time when sequencing, click and drag to rearrange your props and groups, and export the collection of all views to import them into future sequences. The next reason groups are important is because of channel sorting. Let's look at the four color bush group, which is sorted by bush, with the red channel for each bush showing up every fourth line. Just right click to sort your channels, and you can choose from different options, like sort by color. If you put all of your traditional props in a group at the preview level, you can sort by color for your entire house in just a few clicks. Now let's look at placing effects. If you choose Select as your on-mouse click option, you get to use keyboard shortcuts, which you can view or modify by visiting Tools, then Keyboard Preferences. I'll use the D key for Down effects in this example to place a few effects. The first editing feature to highlight is the Paste Special menu. I'll copy these effects, select the next bottom cell, and then use the Paste Special menu to flip the effects vertically. As a bonus, you can select both the Down and Up chases now, and use the Repeat button to keep the pattern going. 
Next, let's look at modifying these effects using the right-click menu and foreground and background options. The foreground menu lets you make changes to effects you've already placed. So if I change my mind and want each of these to fade up instead, I can modify all of the effects at once with one simple click. You can also make changes to the background effects, which means the empty space. For this example, I'll change the lower limit of the fade to 25 instead of 0, and I'll use the foreground menu again to change these back to fade downs, now from 100% to 25%. Then with the background menu, if I set the background to the minimum intensity, the empty space will fill in at 25% and give you a different looking effect. If you ever want to modify the type of effect, like changing the solid on effect to a shimmer, just change the channel effect, select the area you want to change, then use the letter M for modify on your keyboard. Another S6 improvement is the chase function. We can place normal chases using the keyboard shortcut H, but what about a bouncing effect for leaping arches? By default, when you create a chase down, then try to go back up, these bottom effects get overwritten. To change this outcome, click the drop down arrow by the chase button and uncheck the clear selection first option. Now when you go back and forth, the original effects stay intact, giving you that perfect leaping arch effect. Lastly, Generation 3 traditional light sequencing can get even easier through the use of motion effects. In the preview, I created a group with all of the traditional prop elements using the Use Preview Group arrangement. By switching the effect type to Motion and pressing the shortcut A for a maximum intensity effect, the motion effect generator opens. The equivalent of a chase effect in motion effects is called single block, and by choosing left, right, up, and down, you can now create chases across your display in a matter of seconds, rather than manually creating a chase throughout every traditional channel in your display. Be sure to explore the other features and toolbars in the sequencer as you create your sequence, then use the toggle preview button and the keyboard shortcut spacebar to play and watch your effects. And that's all for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss a notification about new videos.